All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be checking out OP07 Rob Lucci. Um, the sim has been updated, so for those of you who have not been on the sim in a while, update your sim as soon as you can, and you'll be able to play with all the cool new leaders from OP07. Um, this is a really exciting time for someone like myself who enjoys playing with new decks and playing in a new meta where not everything has been figured out yet. We don't know what deck is the best yet. They haven't even had any major tournaments in the East yet, like, you know, tournaments over 500 players um, since Sakazuki's been banned and since OP07's hit. So, it, like, we're at this really amazing, interesting, creative new period that just... This is what I look forward to in new sets. Like, this this is the thing I look forward to, and it would not even be, it would not even be possible for someone like myself, if it weren't for Batsu and those guys over at the One Piece TCG Sim, you know, the guys that make that possible. So big shout out to them. Definitely check them out if you, you know, whenever you get a chance. Uh, and it's all for free, guys. Like it's, it's, if you're a new player, why would you not download the Sim and see how to play the game? It's very, very easy to learn, very fun. And it has a lot of uh, depth, and depth and complexity if you keep playing, you'll, you'll start to see it. Okay, so we're looking at Rob Lucci today. Just to give an idea of how this is going to flow out, first we're going to look at um, about three or four Rob Lucci lists uh, over in the East that are doing well, and then we're going to look at some games from me on the Sim uh, using one of those decks. So let's go ahead and dive into it, guys. we got a lot to talk about. Don't want this video to go on for too long. Uh, one thing I have to show real quick is just how the meta looks over there. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, I promise, but look at this, guys. There's a green deck in Bonnie. There's a black deck in Lucci and Gecko Moria. Purple has Raju. There's a red purple total hybrid with this, you know, with ST10 Law. This will be available to us, I think, in one month, by the way, because all we're waiting on in the in the West is this card right here, Kid and Killer, and this card right here, Bond Clay. That's it. Everything else is already available to us. So we're just waiting on those two cards, and this deck is ready for us over in the West. Uh, so, and, and it, 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 did you notice that? Here's here's the other one. It is like a perfect red-purple split. There might be a little more purple than red in some lists and a little more red than purple in others. Like in this one, I think it was more red. Yeah, so it, it kind of goes back and forth. If you want to make it more red, if you like red better, go that way. If you want to make it more purple, go that way. It, it really is uh, very malleable like that. Kat, Katakuri and Anel in yellow, and really... Honestly, SD13 Luffy is just straight yellow, for those who don't know. The only two black cards in the deck are Gekka, Moria, and Sabo. That's it. Everything else comes from the starter deck. And then a few, you know, there's a few that don't come from the starter deck, like uh, uh, Luffy, Flampy, uh, Hiyori. And I think that's, what is that it? I think that might literally be it. So really awesome stuff. Um, and, and again, other than the cards that are black. Um, so yeah, you got black decks, yellow, uh, yellow, green, red slash purple. That one's kind of hard to get by itself. Ray, Ray is basically all purple. It's got a, a small, tiny bit of blue. Okay, this is not correct. Whatever this, th oh, this is supposed to be a red purple law deck. So that's interesting. Look, and this one's running four Tony Tony choppers. Really cool. But there are Ray lists down here. Sorry guys. Sorry for the, you know, the, the trick there. There are a lot of, uh, or excuse me, there are some Raju decks out there, but they're primarily purple. This one's running one blue card, right? So whatever color deck you're trying to play, there is an option out there for you. Ivan Cobb is making a, um, you know, a, a, a small comeback for blue. Uh, Nami is still a very relevant deck. Boa Hancock is still up there. Like this deck's doing very well as well. <laughs> Sorry guys, we, we are end up doing a small little meta watch, aren't we? Red's got Dragon. This one got first place in a store battle. Not not a huge tournament, but it's still something. And then Red Blue VV, Nefeltari VV coming in. Look at this. This is like a really nice Red Blue split. Just awesome. Such an exciting time when it is an actual fresh new meta. It it is a good feeling. So now let's dive into the OP07 Luchi decks. First up is this one. I'm going to read through the list, and then we're going to kind of break it apart, dissect it, and analyze it and all that stuff. And then, like I said, from there, we'll go on to the, my uh, my games on the sim. I got three games lined up for y'all. Uh, I'm going to read through the list, and then we'll break it down. Four Surus, three Kaku, four Khalifa, four Spandam, four Sabo, four Rebecca, four Luchi, four Moria, two Spandine, two Brook, three Kaku, the, the 2K counter Kaku, three Stussy, two Ice Ages, three Innies Lobby, and four Tempest Kicks. So the, the bottom part there is very interesting. Uh, this seems like the card that goes in and out of a few decks in place of Helmeppo. You either choose to go Helmeppo to have stronger count, or stronger combo power with your Gecko Moria, or you go this for a little more consistent all-around package, I think. Uh, but remember, this doesn't have... Like, yes, this has... Uh, this can generate a lot of value over the course of the game by giving minus one here and there, or excuse me, minus two here and there. 
but Helmeppo gives minus three, and it's a 1k counter in hand. And it can be brought back with Gekko Moria, so it does have its perks as well. But I do think it's going to come down to a preference thing. It is still running four Subarus. This is something you'll be able to grab back with Gekko Moria. And if you already have your enemies lobby down, minus two here, minus two here, minus one with your leader. Tons and tons of value in this package. Um, and there are really insane combos. We're going to go over some real quick for y'all, or I'm going to go over some real quick for y'all in this video. Gecko Moria, right? Let's just, you ready? Yep. Yeah, I know you guys already know how this works, right? But for those who don't, check this out. There's like a new combo with uh, Brook and with Spandine for this package. First, we'll do the Brook one, then we'll do Spandine. So play out Gecko Moria. We'll get back a Rebecca and a Suru, right? Okay. Or, or a Spandam, you know, if, if you don't need to remove anything. But let's just say we have to remove something. And this is where Helmepo is really nice. So, okay, we'll minus two to the cost of a character with, with this. Then we'll activate our Rebecca's effect. With Rebecca, we'll grab back our Brook. He can hit a, he does minus one. Suru does minus two. And your leader effect is another minus one. So you can hit a four cost or less with that, with that combo we just said right there. And look what it does. You get a 9,000 power body, a zero, a zero power blocker, this, this one doesn't matter as much, obviously. But then you also get this card, Brook, that they have to deal with. Yes, it does come into play rested from Rebecca's effect, but still, they have to deal with it. It's probably going to act as like a 2k counter, because they'll probably swing 6 into it, and then you just let it go at that point, unless you can defend it with Rebecca. You know, something like that. Now, the other combo I think is even crazier, but but I feel like it does require Helmepo. Maybe not. If you have any lobby already down, then you can um, then you can get make this work even better. Because it's Gecko Moria into Rebecca and Suru. Activate Suru first for minus two. With Rebecca, grab back Spandine. Re Spandine grabs back a, a four cost or lower um, CP character from your trash and puts it in play rested. So we're gonna grab him. And with that one activation, you filled up the entire board. Like you put five cards on the board with, that, with, with just the cost of eight Dawn. So eight cost 9K Gecko Moria comes in, gives us a zero power blocker, Reduces the cost of one of the characters on their side by two. Gives us this guy as well, a three cost 2k, you know, just body on the board, Spandine, which gives us Rob Lucci. That's a five card combo for eight Dawn. That ends up being a eight plus four plus four. So that's 16 plus another four, 20 um, Dawn's worth for eight. And if you're running Helmepo, it's 21 <laughs> Dawn, uh, Dawn's worth for eight. Just absolutely incredible. That That is a really nice combo. Helps you fill out the board. I'm not saying that combo will come up every single game, but it's something that's there. Okay, now let's look at two more decks, and, and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the games on the sim. Uh, so notice this one's running Helmepo. I'm not going to run through every single card. Don't worry. This one's got Helmepo here, and then it also has um, Sabo. And notice what it's missing. By the way, real quick, for those who don't know what this does, this is a 8-cost 9,000 power Sabo that... You trash a card, and you KO a 5 or less and a 3 or less on your opponent's side. That is really big in a deck like this, because you have minus 1 built into your leader. Uh, you have Ice Ages. You have Tempest Kicks at 4 of. You have Surus, Helmepos. And you can play a Helmepo and this card at the same time, and then swing with, swing with your leader first. So minus 3 here, minus 1 here, hits a 5 and a 3. You can do it however you need to. Combo with an Ice Age, hit anything. Just incredible. Uh, very, very strong. And then it's still running all the other good stuff we talked about, like the Spandine Brook combo with, with Rob Lucci. Uh, personally, I like this better. And I think if I were to modify this list, I would remove the Sabos and add the Innies Lobbies as well. Like, I think I would just double up, like two, two Helmepos and go to Innies Lobbies. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see what ends up working out in the end, see what's best. But this is very nice. But like I said, um, you either, from what I've noticed, you either run the Innies Lobbies or you run the Helmepos. That seems like the, the way it goes. Because let's look at the next list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so here's the other one. This one got first place in a flagship. And this one runs four Innies Lobbies and no Helmepos. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, I would like to just drop at least one or two of these Innies Lobbies and go up at least one or two Helmepos. I don't know. We'll have to see. And I've also seen decks that are not running Kaku that are actually running the six cost Sakazuki in the place of it. And I do, I do kind of like that. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, the list that I'm running, this is the list that I, I, I just took it right from this guy here. I, I just net decked. Uh, this guy named uh, Daiki or Daiki. Di I don't know how to say that. The, I think this is pretty much card for card the deck that I'm running here. Uh, he's running Borsalino and Sakazuki. And I just, 
I don't know. Something about Sakazuki, I just think this is one of those cards that's just so good, especially when you're not afraid to fill up your trash because you have so many ways to get it back from the trash now, whatever you put in there with Rebecca and Gecko Moria. Uh, it's running three Stussies. This card is just insane. If you don't know what this card does, you trash one of your characters to pop one of their characters. It doesn't matter how big your character is, and it doesn't matter how big their character is. So you can pop a... She's nine cost, right? So you can play a, a Spandam. Search her up with Spandam, potentially, right? If, if you get lucky. and Or if you have one in hand, play it out. Rem, trash your Spandam and remove their big mom. Like a ten cost character, it doesn't matter. Super, super powerful. Okay, now this list is running the Helmeppo, and it's not running the Innie's Lobby stage. Okay, so that's about all I wanted to look at for the for those for those decks. Um, let's go over to the games now, uh, and just to kind of show you guys, I have it up here. Th this is the list. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, like card for card, this is the one we just looked at. Uh, so screenshot it if you want to try this, or check out the deck list on OnePieceTopDecks.com, and, and here and there it is. Okay, let's get into these games. Uh, first game here. Let me make sure the speed's up to two. Yep. Uh, play volumes off. All right, we're good. So first game is against Blue Doe Flamingo. And remember, guys, this is on the OP07 format that we're going against here. Um, Doe Flamingo and Seven Whirlers of the Sea got a very nice package, like an update in OP07. So this is a leader I do have my sights on. I do want to mess with that at some point. The it, It's weird. You know, as you play a game, I guess you get bored using the, you know, uh, you get bored using the same decks over and over again. By the way, I had to use two Tempest Kicks there just to get better cards in my hand. That card has such nice utility. Pay one, draw a card. Pay one, draw a card. I used two of them, and now I've got a little bit better hand to work with here. Uh, but the, the two cards I'm looking at most in OP07, or the two two decks that I'm looking at a lot, I shouldn't say most, are Do Flamingo and Red, Bl or, uh, excuse me, Blue, Green, Zoro, and Sanji. I can't wait to try those. Okay, so I'm attacking... How do I say this? Um, I'm, I'm going to remove two characters off the board with Lucci this turn, no matter what. It's going to happen. And I might be able to get three if he makes the wrong decision blocking with his um, Do Flamingo, or if he decides to let this card go. So he does it correctly. 1k counter out of hand. He had, he had to give me one card for free. Now I'm swinging 5k into him again. He gives me a 2k counter right there. So now it's like, okay, well, it didn't matter. Ice Age, Ice Age, and remove both your guys off the board. Now, that might not seem like a good play to some people. Like, why would I use my Ice Ages like that so, so um, you know, carelessly? But remember, guys, me and me and Do Flamingo here, we're playing tempo decks for the most part. He can really fill the board out. Because watch what he does here, guys. This leader can really fill the board out. So he gets a Gecko Moria there. I think he got back his Gem Bay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Swing seven at my face. I think he should have, like... Well, I, can't, I, I do I do actually give him two cards here because I'm trying to play around Pudding. I don't know if he's running Pudding, but he had four Dawn open. Plays out the Jinbei. That's a safe bet. And who knows, if he had Pudding as well, maybe the right call would have been to play Pudding there if I took it. That, that would have been a really nice heads-up play. But instead, he gets to play out Jinbei, which plays out the Dracul Mihawk. And he's back up to four characters. He had one character, and now he's back up to four. Um... So I'm going to swing five at this Gecko Moria. I know he's running low on counter power. Because remember, he had to give me a 2k counter last turn. So he he is running low on counter power. He gives me a 1k counter. I don't know if I would have done that personally. I, I don't think I would have gave him my 3 cost Do Flamingo. Uh, unless I had another one in hand. Maybe he has another one in hand. Because you need to keep setting your top life card. Or excuse me, your, your, top, your top five cards with your leader's effect. Okay, so I'm going to play out a Rob Lucci here. Minus two there. I have to return three cards. I'll just return the three big ones there in an event, I think it was. It's okay if you can't pop two targets with your Rob Lucci. You need to make sure you have board control in some of these situations. Like in this situation right here, I know that whoever gives up board control first and can't reclaim it, they're, they're done for, right? They're, it's over. He hits me with a uh, Gravity Blade Raging Tiger, and he hit the wrong target. He should not have hit my Borsalino. Borsalino, yeah, it's nice you can remove it, but hit my Rob Lucci so I can't keep bringing them back to KO your characters. Because guess what? That's that's what I'm going for, right? <laughs> that, that's what I'm going to try and do coming up here. I play out my uh, Sabo, do some cycling, play out a Spandam, get a Stussy, and now whatever he plays next turn, I can remove with my Stussy if I need to. Okay, sw swing with leader for, I think it was seven, swing for nine with uh, Gecko Moria. <clears throat> excuse me, he bottom decks it with his Red Rock, plays out that Jinbei card that allows him to play out a four cost or lower seven Warlords of the Sea character. Uh, that is a that is a nice 
combo there, guys. That Jinbei, but notice his hand is starting to dwindle down. So I, I'm wondering if he's running. I, I haven't, you know, I don't know who this player is, obviously. And here we go. I'm going to pop both his guys. Because he did not bottom deck my Rob Lucci, it's going to bite him in the butt right here. He just lost two characters. I just gained three characters because of my Gecko Moria. Um, and now I've got a full board. He has three cards in hand. This this game's pretty much over, right? Th th there's not a whole lot he can do here. Um, I mean, maybe maybe if he's running Kaido or something. I, I don't even know. Like the, the 10 cost Kaido that can bounce to or the 10 cost Kaido that can draw four. Okay, so he's still got a... Um, he's still got a set... Um, um, <laughs> excuse me, a uh, Red Rock. He, uh, I think he messed up there. I think he meant to use his leader's effect. I'm not exactly sure, but he ends up surrendering here. It, it's really, it's honestly, it's like over because I'm probably going to defend that Rob Lucci and just go for game next turn. So that way I'll either win or get every card out of his hand and get every card off the board. But I think he actually just messed up with his Dawn there because he has, yeah, he has eight Dawn attached to his leader and look at what his top card is. He should have played that out. But at the same time, what does that do, right? That just gets another 1K counter out of his hand or a 2K counter if he uses the law, and then I can just run him over. So uh, good stuff there. That I, I do think um, I do think uh, Gecko Moria, or excuse me, Rob Lucci is slightly favored into uh, into that matchup because it has so much more removal, so much more consistent and um, recyclable removal. Okay, so next up here we got um, <clears throat> Enel. Let me make sure that, yep, yeah, sometimes I feel like it doesn't do it when I say it. So this Anel, um, very aggressively taking life with a Flampy. Uh, not sure I agree with that, but, you know, that's fine. You know, he, it's like, hey, play it however you want to, right? Oops, sorry, guys. I forgot to move my face over. I've been doing that a lot lately. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but I, I, don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I agree with uh, playing out the Flampy there in an, in an Anel list. But at the same time, I think it is a good card to have in Anel as a 2K counter. But what, what 2K counter does it take the place of, right? Because you run Satori, you run Hiyori, and I think it runs Beige. So what 2K counter did Flampy take the place of? That's like my big question. But who knows? The, again, this is a brand new meta. This guy's trying out something new, and he wants to see how it goes. Plays out Ace. Okay, so there you go. So now we're starting to see, like, this guy is, is uh, experimenting with a Hiyori list with the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with the new five cost rusher ace. So he probably has the two cost guys that can bring him into play as well somewhere in the deck. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, swing seven at lead. I'm actually going to take this. That might have been a little bit greedy. Um, but I do want to go down in life, at least down to two. So that way he can't hit me with too big of a uh, um, Yamato. Okay, so I just want to get this ace off the board. That's, you know, I don't want to let him, I don't want to let him keep these bigger characters. So attack with my leader to trash my top two cards, minus one to the ace. Uh, he counters out, swing seven. Um, and, and right here, like I said, he's like, I, I can basically get rid of this card however I want to. And I just end up playing out a Luchi here instead of the other seven cost guy. There are the six cost 7,000 power. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, I, sorry, guys. Uh, Sakazuki. But I don't want to trash another card. Because currently yellow doesn't have uh, any way to like... Uh, punish you for your um, for having too many cards in hand. Okay, so I end up clearing up his board a little bit. He's playing nothing but these little cards. These these do not threaten me, right? Like I'm not threatened by anything he has. And whatever he plays, I'm gonna hit with Stussy in the game. Yeah, okay. He he just said I gave up. And oh, that's funny. I've got two Stussies in the. Oh no, excuse me. I've got a Stussy and a Sabo in my life. I've got two in hand. So even if he plays out that that um that Ace, I'm just gonna pop it immediately. Right, so if he can't finish me that turn or get through this blocker, he's just dead anyway. And my board is at the point now where it's going to be like a, what, a 5, 5, 7, 6 base attack. Four attacks coming in, and he has one 2k counter in hand. So, I mean, the game wasn't over there. I think he should have kept, I think he should have kept trying, uh, but who knows? He might have just not liked the way the deck was functioning. Okay, last one. We got uh, versus Ivankov. Uh, seeing, a, seeing an Ivankov deck, uh, it's, this has been my first time playing against one of these in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I did see some of these in OP05, I think it was. Or what are we in now? Excuse me, OP06. I have seen a few of these pop up on the sim. Um, but I still think it's missing something. I don't know. Like, if, if you don't have removal and they can sit on their, their Inazuma card that can just draw them cards, I think it comes out in EB01. Then, you know then you're, you know, you're in trouble if you can't remove some of these cards. Okay. 
So I don't have a lot of cards in my trash, but whenever I attack with my leader, it will give me two more cards in trash. Minus one to his Ivankov. I do not want him generating any kind of extra value from that card, so I do pop it. That was a little bit greedy. It was a little bit greedy, but I'd rather get that off the board because that thing can draw a card when it attacks if you have six or less cards in hand, I believe. Okay, plays out the stage, allows him to trash cards if he needs to. Uh, I take this hit. And I have taken uh, two hits already. I gotta, you know, you do have to be careful taking too many hits. Okay, this card, I I gotta pause it. Oh, hang on, let me go back. 10, let me pause, uh, hit play. Oops, where are we at? Okay, this card right here, uh, Gum Gum Champion Rifle. I do not recommend you play this card if you're running um, Impel Down. I mean, unless, I guess unless you're running Pudding to combo to help them, you know, to trash cards. But look what this does. Okay, one cost. If your leader's impel down, give up to one of your opponent. Or, excuse me, give up to one of your leader or characters plus two thousand power until the end of this battle. Then your opponent returns one of their active characters to the owner's hand. Well, look at my board. Guess what? I'm going to return to my hand. I'm going to take the span dam back, right? Because I'm going to be able to draw more cards from that. It, it just, like I said, guys, it just it, it did not seem great. I'm I'm not going to lie. But who knows? If you only have one character on the board, that card's insane. So maybe he should have just saved it for later. All right. Sorry, guys. Got to adjust the mustache there and the beard. But yeah, swinging in for six here. I play out a Sabo. My board's protected from any kind of KO. But blue usually has bottom decking or bouncing. And I'm feeling pretty good right now, right? I mean, I've cleared up his board. This this isn't like a... I'm sure this is not a top-tier leader, even if people... Like, some people could argue like, yeah, but what if you just haven't figured it out yet? I, I don't think so, guys. I don't think that's the case with this uh, with Ivan Kov. But who knows? Y'all tell me down in the comment section below if you think otherwise. So Ice Age, Double Tempest Kick. We're going to smash him with the card he just returned back to our hand. He bounced back the Rob Lucci with that with the Luffy's effect. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll just reduce your 6 cost and your 7 cost down to 1 and 2. And I'll pop them both with Rob Lucci. And, I mean, we are, we're in really good shape at this point. Okay. So right here, Swings 9. I don't want to lose too much more life. I'm, I'm, I'm losing too much life. Um, so right here, I don't have a Rob Lucci in my trash. So I think the, the right call here first is to swing with my leader. Let's see what I do. Looks like I might just play out the Gecko Moria. But I think the right call here is to swing with my leader first. I don't remember what I do, to be honest. Okay, attack. All right, let's see what we got. Minus one there. And we did not get a Luchi. So, okay, we got to go to plan two. And let's just start, you know, laying down, laying on the, the, the damage. And I don't want to let him keep that Ivankov. <clears throat> Let's see what we get. Oh, we got a Rob Lucci in the trash there for next turn. Very nice. But it looks like he's going to get to keep the Ivan Cobb after all. Because like I said, whenever that card attacks, if you have six or less cards in hand, you get to draw a card. It, it's some, I, I don't know if I said that correct, but it's something like that. However, I have got a Lucci, uh, Lucci in the trash now, and I believe I also have... No, I don't have a Helmepo in the trash, but I only have one. Uh, I think I only run one Helmepo in this version. So I don't have Helmepo in the trash, but once I get that in there, or like a Suru or something, then I can pop his board very easily okay swing six at life two could counter out i probably should have done the sewer after what i just said because I, I do need to make sure i have a uh, cost reducer in the trash for my uh, my gecko moria combo okay there we go did it that way and this is the card i was talking about that six cost seven thousand power card the inazuma that card is very good guys so swing six at ivan cop let's see what they give me yeah, that, that um, Inazuma on the board, it's a 6 cost, 7,000 power character with a 1k counter that has end of turn. If you have 2 or less cards, uh, draw 2 cards. Really, really strong. Okay. And now, so, okay, I've I've got him kind of where I want him, right? Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep filling up the trash. Spandam, get the Stussy there. Right right here, I think I should just Stussy. But, oh, oh excuse me, did I, did I get what I needed in the trash? Yeah, so so get the Rob Lucci, trashing the Spandam, and then I think... No, I don't have a Helmepo. I probably should have... Yeah, I think I messed that up, to be honest with you guys. I think I play out a Spandam here just to get more card draw, or, or I just cancel the effect. Yeah. W what I should have done there is just played Stussy and just trashed that Inazuma. Like, I definitely should have gotten rid of that card. That was just simply a play mistake. No way around it. Uh, but it happens, right? That's, that's the nice part about the Sim. You get to practice and, like, analyze your, your games and so on. So right here, he is up against the ropes, but it's not over for him yet. He needs to get rid of that last card. Because if he gets rid of that last card, okay, he does. 
So draw two, draw two. Did you see that? So he drew two from his leader's effect, and then he had two or less cards in hand. So he drew two more from that Inazuma. That was just so nice. Like, that was so strong there. That's why it was important that I get rid of that Inazuma. There was no reason I should have let it live. Okay, swinging five at leader here. Let's see what he does. 1K counter out, swing six at leader, and swing uh, six at leader. Play out the Stussy, just KO the Rob Lucia, just get the Inazuma out of here. I can't let him have that card any longer. Okay. <clears throat> so now he's kind of in like this infinite cycle of like playing these super efficient cards, but I'm removing them. So, so they're just never getting the full, you know, values worth. He's pretty much just, you know, blasting through his deck. I think he has, I think he said 14 cards left in his deck just to try to hang on. But that's the thing that Ivan Kov needs. It needs some type of boss character. Like how Black now has Gecko Moria. Um, what, what was it called? Ivan Kov needs some type of character that it can play at the end of the game. That it gets some kind of like strong value from. Okay, and that's game. Can't get out of a 16k attack there. So that so that was it, guys. Uh, let me get back to the deck just to end on. Okay, th this is the list I was running, like I said. Um, I'm a big fan of the Helmetho. I think Sakazuki is good, but maybe I go down to a two of these. I, th I think I might go down to two Sakazukis, up one Helmepo, or actually, sorry, go down one uh, Sakazuki, probably down one either Borsalino or probably Sabo, actually, maybe Borsalino or Sabo, and go up to um, Innie's Lobbies. Because I think Innie's Lobby is like really, really strong in this deck, and it allows me to hit so many more targets, like su such so many quality targets without having to waste my entire hand going through all my Tempest Kicks, all my Ice Ages early in the game. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Please do not forget to uh, like and subscribe if you've not already. If you've got any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, peace.